Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another Penny Hunt video here on the Penny Hunter channel. I have some exciting news. I am back in Connecticut for a visit to family. And you know what that means. Connecticut boxes. I did already confirm that they were circulated because they got the holes on the bottom. And you know what? We're going to crack this open. As a reminder, we are trying to fill these books of pennies and so far we have filled over 110 spots. Let's see what this box has to offer. And I'll bring you back in our very first find. Roll number two. It's our first wheat scent. It's a 1953 out of Philadelphia. Pretty sure we have this one already, but we'll check at the end. First wheat scent found. Roll number three gives us our first 2009, and it is the presidential year's version. It is out of Philadelphia, and it is our first one found of these for the book in our third box overall. I'll set it aside as a find, and I'll put it in the box at the end. Same roll. Roll number three. We have a blazing 1982 large scent out of Philadelphia. I know we already have an 82 Philadelphia large date, but this is definitely going to upgrade. Shuffling through, looking for uh, finds for the book, and uh, roll number three gives us our second wheat scent. Looks pretty worn. Not sure how old it is. A 1944 D. I think we might have the Denver, but we'll certainly check. Wheat scent number two. Roll number five. Wheat scent number three looks pretty new i see some shine on the top so it's probably from the 50s let's see Ooh, it is not from the 50s it's a 1938 with a little bit of shine on the top and the bottom of this coin that is a beautiful coin i will take it Three points added to our score, and it is the third wheat scent found. Roll number seven. We have an old penny. And it is a wheat scent. Wheat scent number four found in roll number seven. It's a 1945. Also in roll number seven, an absolute beautiful, beautiful 1964 out of Denver. I believe this will be an upgrade. I know I have found a couple 60s already in great condition, so we will check this against the book at the end, but I believe this is another beautiful addition to our 60s collection. Roll number 11, and we have a whopper of a roll here. We have one wheat scent, two wheat scents, three wheat scents showing. So let's see what we have here. It's got some shine to it. Another shiny 1930s. This one's a brown reddish brown 1935 all right this one's really beat up and cruddy hopefully we can get a year off of it a 1955 out of philly it looks like we definitely have that already and uh this definitely will not be going in the book and over here Ooh, look at this one, guys. This one looks really nice. I'm guessing it's also from the 50s, but we have a red-brown coin. It's another beautiful... Oops. Another beautiful stunner from the 30s. Jewett City Bank, man. Jewett City Bank. My favorite bank up here in Connecticut. Look at this, 1939. Absolutely beautiful. So that's two 1930s in one roll, and two of them were in decent condition. This one's in really good condition. Roll number 12. We have a wheat scent ender. 
Must have been on the other side of the roll because when I first opened the box, I did not see any Wheat Scent Enders. Alright guys, this is the Wheat Scent Ender. It's pretty old and pretty beat up. I don't know if we'll get a year off of it. I certainly hope so. Oh, we have a teens. We have a teens. I'm wondering if this is a 1918. I'll put it under the scope. Let me check and I'll bring you right back. All right, we're back and I cannot make out that year. That is a 19 in the teens. I'm thinking it's an eight. I, I really think that's an eight. Nothing else makes sense there. It could be a 12 that got messed up a little bit. I'm going to call it a 1918, which is the oldest of the box and the oldest wheat scent I have found in a long time. That is wheat scent number eight in only 12 rolls, and it was on the end. We have another 2009, and this one is a beautiful one. I think it will upgrade in the book. It's a 2009 out of Philly. I think the one we had looked rough. So I will check at the end. I believe this is an upgrade, though. Roll number 15. We have more wheat scents. We have one right there. One right there. That looks like a 1935 to me. And one right there. It's a 1934. Guys, we have hit the jackpot in 1930s wheat scents in this box. And a 2009. I will go through them. I'll show you what they are. And we'll see if we need them for the book. The 1934 in decent condition. <clears throat> Where is it? There it is. It's a 1935 out of Philadelphia. Really nice back on that one. Put it up with the other 30s that we've uh, collected in this video. And the third wheat scent of this roll. A 1956 Denver. Roll number 16. We have our first Canadian. That took a long time. 1973. I was wondering when we were going to find one. Canada is on the board. Same roll as the Canadian, roll number 16. We have back-to-back -back wheat scents laying here. Both of them face up. It's 1946 Philadelphia. And wheat scent number 10 in only 16 rolls. It's a 1950 out of Denver. I do believe we need that one. We'll add it to the board. Number 10. Roll number 17. We have ourselves another wheat scent here. A 1955 out of Denver. We've seen this a couple times already. We'll set it aside. It counts as a wheat scent. Roll number 19. Another wheat scent. A 1941 Denver. I don't find too many Denver minted wheat scents, especially from the 40s. So I think this is definitely going to be added to the book. Great find. Another wheat scent added to the board. Roll number 20. It's the box that keeps on giving. We have a foreign and another wheat scent. This one looks like it's been cleaned. I've been seeing... A couple clean coins in this box, and uh, this one looks like it was attempted to be cleaned. A 1954 out of Denver. And I believe this is Uruguay. Uh, yeah, I believe that's a Uruguay. It's from 1996. I've seen a couple of... Oh, sorry, Balboa. Oh, Panama. Panama. It's a Panamanian. So, uh, I've seen a couple of these. I do have a couple... They're cool to find. It's our first foreign in box number one from Connecticut. Roll number 24, and we have two wheat scents at least in this roll. 
One there and one there. This one looks like it's going to be a nice one. It's in very good condition. I'm guessing it's from the 50s, but we've been surprised already in this box. Yeah, surprised again. Look at this. Another 1935, and this one is in really good condition. It's brown, but look at this coin. You can see almost every detail in the wheats on the back. I, I would have told you that this was a 1958 coin if I didn't know any better. Really amazing find. So let's put it up there. And let's check this one. This one does look old. It's definitely more worn. Another 30s penny. 1934 again. This is getting crazy, guys. We're only 24 rolls into this box, and we already have 7 pennies from the 30s. Same roll, I moved a couple other coins. We have our second Canadian, which is a 1977, and the reason I brought you in... Another wheat scent, 1952 out of Denver. I have a belief that we may need this as well, so we're going to set that aside. Guys, we are on fire. Same roll, roll number 24, wheat scent number 20, another 1934. That's our third 1934 of the box. We're only halfway through. We've definitely found some kind of 1930s collection dump. I've never seen anything like this. We now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Wheaties from the 30s, halfway through a box of 50 rolls. Halfway through the box, our first S mint mark, and I think we need this for the book as well. It's a 1970S out of San Francisco. Guys, roll number 25. I think we have two more wheat cents in this roll. Let me just double check. Yeah, I think there's, a, there's one at least. I'm wondering if this is a wheat cent. No, it's not. Okay. So we have wheat scent number 21 in roll number 25. It's a 1948 out of Philadelphia. So it's not from the 30s, but you know what? I'll take it. Roll number 26 gives us wheat scent number 22. It's a 1946 with a little bit of damage. I think we need it, but it's getting hard to remember which 40s and 30s we need right now because of how many we have found. We'll find out at the end of the video if we need the 1946 Philadelphia. Same roll. There was another wheat scent sitting right in front of me the entire time, and I did not see it. This is wheat scent number 23 in roll number 26. It's another 1946 in the same roll. Just so you guys know, there's two right there. This is the third one. Unbelievable, guys. Roll number 27. Another wheat scent. Wheat scent number 24, and it's another from the 30s. 1935 again. So we have multiple 34s, 35s, and 36s in this box. Same roll as that 35. I think this is wheat scent number 25. I'm losing count. A 38. More 1930s wheat scents in this box. Roll number 28. Just our third Canadian, but it's a King George the Sixth From 1950. I will take it. That's worth 10 points on the board. It's our second 10-point coin. Now, I said I wasn't going to keep track of points uh, for the penny book hunts, but I do keep track on the side anyway just to see what the box averages out to. Uh, what's funny about this King George VI is it is worth 10 points. I've had two Florida boxes total 11 and 16 points respectively. I haven't found any 10-point coins in two of those boxes, and I have found two in just 28 rolls here. Oh my god. The same roll as the King George the Sixth, roll number 28. It has officially happened after 65 boxes of pennies. We have a King George the Fifth. 
This is a 1928 Canadian one cent piece. There it is. King George V has joined our penny hunts. I don't even think I have this on my scorecard because I had never found one ever in a box. I will have to review the scorecard to see what it is. I found one other King George V in my box of wheat scents that I bought from a friend of mine, but I have never found a King George the Fifth penny in a box. 1928 Canadian one cent piece. Amazing. I am extremely happy right now. This is really cool to see. Wanted to bring you back in real quick. I did refer to my score chart, which appears at the beginning of some of my videos. Uh, I have the King George the fifth pennies at 20 points. Uh, I'm debating changing that for future videos, but for this video, I will honor that uh, because 20 points just doesn't seem accurate based on how rare this coin is. I do have the King George the sixth at 10, which I do consider fair. So we might address that in a future video, but this is worth 20 points. I was opening up roll number 30, and we have wheat scent number 26. The 1951 Denver. It's pretty worn. I thought it was going to be a little bit older. This box has been really weird. We've had some really nice coins from the 30s and some really beat up coins from the 50s. Same roll, roll number 30. We have wheat scent number 27. It's a 1955. Sorry guys, trying to get this to zoom in better. There we go. So I don't see any doubling, but uh, I'll put it under the scope anyway, and uh, I'll double check, but you can usually see the doubling on the 55 with your eyes. So let me double check. I will add this to the stack and bring you back. You see it there, guys. It just popped out of nowhere. Look at this. Would this be considered red-brown? I think it's considered red-brown. This is a really nice coin. I mean, it's got a lot of shine on it. 1937. Probably the nicest wheat scent I have ever pulled out of circulation. Guys, this box is just getting crazier by the roll. Who knows what, well, what else we're going to be able to find here. So many old coins so far. Roll number 32. We're on the board again with wheat scent number 30. Is this going to be again from the 30s? Yes. 1936. It's our third 36 of the box. I'm going to check this for some doubling because it looks like it potentially could have something there with the number in the 6, but it could just be post-mint damage. So let's check it under the scope, and I'll let you know if I find anything. We have our fourth 2009, and this is the Professional Life version. It's from Philadelphia. I believe that we do need this in the book, and if not, it's definitely going to be an upgrade, because if we did find one, it was in crummy condition in Florida. So let's set this one aside. Another find added to the board. Roll number 34. We have two more wheat cents. Roll wheat scent number 31 and number 32. I'll show you the one that's obverse facing us right here. It's a 1937 out of Philadelphia. So this penny right here ties our third best box of all time. And this one officially moves us into third place. This is wheat scent number 32. It's a 1956D. Wheat scent number 33 was hiding in that same roll. Based on what we have found so far in this box, I'm guessing this is another 1930s. No? Okay, 1958. This box continues to surprise me. Well, it's in decent condition. It's got a little bit of shine on it, but at the end of the day, it's a 1958 out of Philly. Pretty common. Same roll. We have two more wheat scents. Two more. Four and five in the roll. A 1939, another 30s one. Put it up there. And another 1958, this one out of Denver. Guys, we are... We, 
if if this continues, and it, and it should, based on the amount of rolls we've been through, this is only roll number 34, we're going to have our best wheat scent box of all time. Roll number 38 gives us another wheat scent. It's wheat scent number 35. It ties us for our second box of all time. The record is 36. I believe that's a 1928. I can't exactly make it out. Let's see what we can see here. That's really, really crusty. I'm not going to put this in the book because, honestly, this isn't worth saving. I honestly might throw it back into circulation when we're done because I can barely make that out. This is really trashed, but uh, I want to say it is a 1928 wheat scent. Just another unbelievable find in this box. Well, there it is. Wheat scent number 36, and it's another shiny wheat scent. This one from 1948. A gem here, an absolute gem. We've had multiple shiny wheat scents from the 30s and 40s in this box. I just... I have no words for the amazing finds that we have found so far. We have a King George V, a King George VI, what I believe to be a 1918, a 1928, both of those were really hard to see, and a crap ton from the 30s, and now this beautiful gem from 48. And we're not done. Roll number 38, again, another find. This is the Laureate or the Younghead version, the 1962 Queen Elizabeth. Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. -da 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 -da. Okay, now that you guys have experienced my celebration, this is a record breaking wheat scent. We have wheat scent at number 37 in roll number 40. It's a very common 1944 Philadelphia, so, you know. They had to have a little joke with me here and tell me that my record-breaking wheat scent was the most common one. But 37 wheat scents in one box, and we're not even done yet. Can we get 40? I know it's hard to believe, guys. Roll number 42. Oh, sorry. Roll number, yeah, 41. I can't count. Wheat scent number 38. It's a 1948. Add another one to the board. Roll number 45. Another wheat scent. This one looks pretty old. Nope. Just a 1942. We'll take it though. Another wheat scent added to the board. We have five rolls to go. Can we hit 40 wheat cents? Roll number 49 gives us one more. It's a 1956 out of Denver. Guys, we hit 40 wheat cents and then some. That is wheat cent number 40, 41, and 42. So I'll show you the 37 that's showing. Yet another 1930s wheat cent here. Crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. I'm running out of room. I, I don't even have circles anymore. That's wheat scent number 40. This is number 41. This has some shine on it. Another 37 in the same roll. And wheat scent number 42. It's a 1936. Three 30s in one roll. I don't see any doubling on the front of this. I will throw it under the scope just to double check. And we aren't done. Roll number 50. Come on. Roll number 50 gives us one last wheat scent. I think this is number 44. It's a 1950 out of Philadelphia. All right, in book number one, we added the 1918 Philadelphia. The 1934, the 1935, the 1937, the 1939, and we upgraded the 1938. So we added quite a number. We added five new wheat scents and upgraded one in the 1909 to 1940 book. All right, the second book, 1940 to 1974. 
or sorry, 1941 to 1974, we added the 41D, the 42P, the 45P, the 46P, we upgraded the 44P, we added the 48P, we upgraded the 1950P, we added the 50D, we added the 51D, the 52D, the 53P, we added the 54D, the 55P, which actually I didn't have, which I found very interesting. And moving over to this page, we added the 1970S. We did find two of them, and that one was the best, better of the two. Uh, that 1964D that I found actually did not upgrade. This was a beautiful coin in the book already. So overall, we added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pennies to this book and upgraded two of them. All right, in the third book, we ended up adding the 1976P, the 77P, the 88P, the 94P. We're going to upgrade that 2007 that we found. We're going to add the 2009 birth year out of Philadelphia. We also added the 2009 professional life. I, for some reason, put it in there instead of putting it off to the side. Uh, we're also going to add the 2009 presidential year, as well as the 2011 D. So we don't have that many spots left over, especially in the uh, non-copper years. So we need the 82 zinc large date, which I haven't been able to find a good example of yet. An 87 P, an 89 D, a 91 D, a 97 D, a 2000 D, a 2001 D. A 2007D, a 2008D, the Ds from the 2009, 2009 or 2010D, 12D, and 13D. So mostly what we need are Denver's, which is not a surprise considering where I live and where I get coins from overall in Connecticut and in Florida. Well, I'm happy I went on vacation and I got a penny box in Connecticut because wow. 1918, 1928 potentially, both of the dates are kind of scuffed up. Uh, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 from the 30s, and 44 wheat cents overall. We did find a foreign from Panama to 1982 small date copper out of Philadelphia. Uh, overall, we had that 1928 King George V, our first ever one found in a box. The uh, 1950 King George VI. A laureate portrait or a young head. We only had six Canadians overall, but uh, definitely quality over quantity there. We had four different 2009, or sorry, not four different, four total 2009s, three 1959s, and two S mint marks. So overall, this was a great box. Uh, so I just want to thank you all so much for tuning in once again. I appreciate all the support. Uh, I apologize about the break. Of course, I did go on vacation, so I traveled for a few days. Uh, but I was working on another video, and unfortunately, I'm just not going to share that video uh, on the channel. It didn't come out the way I expected it to. It was a quarter hunt. I was trying to fill um, the state quarter book and the national park book with my stepson. I just didn't feel it made a very fun video overall. Um, I had fun doing the hunt. I had fun finding the stuff that I was looking for. But I just don't think it translated to a video very well. So that was the cause for the break in the middle of last week. So now we have a new video up, and uh, I hope you like this one. I appreciate it again. Um, so please leave a comment if you liked any of these finds. I certainly like them. 44 total wheat cents is a record overall. It is our highest uh, total amount of wheat cents ever found in a penny box, smashing our previous record of 36. Also... This box had 152 points, which not counting my Indian head boxes, not counting those. So for non-Indian head boxes, this is our highest point total box of all time. We are going to be doing a giveaway for subscribers and commenters. I'm going to be digging out my jar of 1960s pennies. I set them aside and collect them. In fact, today we pulled up over 100 just alone in this hunt i'm going to be uh going through them in a couple weeks and the person that guesses how many i own i will show the jug in a couple of videos because i'm not home right now the person that guesses the the closest amount of 1960s pennies that i have 
will get to choose an Indian head from my collection. Um, so there are a couple that will not be, you know, allowed to be given away, but I will allow up to 30 different Indian heads to be chosen from, and the person who guesses the closest amount of 1960s will be able to pick an Indian head of their choosing, and I will mail it to them. Once again, thank you all for the support. I appreciate it. We do weekly penny videos here on the Penny Hunter channel. Please subscribe now if you haven't done so already. Stay safe, have a great week, good luck, and happy hunting.